Not every game ends the way we want. In fact, some losses can be downright gut-wrenching. Some injuries, like a sports hernia, can feel pretty gut-wrenching too. So what exactly is a sports hernia? A sports hernia is an injury to the lower abdominal and groin muscles where they attach around the pubis that can result in intense pain with sudden starts, uh, accelerating movements, or cutting movements, which blues players do all the time. Oh man, I have to be honest. I thought pubis was a Roman emperor up until this moment. So what causes a sports hernia? Lifting heavy objects like the Stanley Cup? Sports hernia is a little bit of a confusing term because it's not a true hernia. And so this is more and more now being called a core muscle injury, which reflects the abdominal core around the pelvis. It's not always easy to tell if you have a sports hernia condition or not, because there can be overlap with other things like hip injuries. And so the most common symptoms that an athlete or hockey player would have is pain around the lower abdominal pubis region or upper thigh that occurs with intense movements, with sudden starts and accelerating movements. Does it heal on its own or is surgery required? Please say it heals on its own. Please say it heals on its own. Hernias can sometimes heal on their own, but oftentimes an athlete, especially an elite athlete, needs to have it fixed. Otherwise, he or she will not be able to do the activities required by their sport. Ouch, doc, don't say fixed. Just say repaired. That sounds like a big deal. Are we talking about major surgery and months of recovery? The surgical repair involves placing a mesh to support the lower abdominal floor and provide good broad-based support that will help stabilize that lower abdomen and pelvis region. In addition to the surgery, it's really important to have a good rehab program afterwards. And we're very fortunate that Ray Borelli, head athletic trainer with the Blues, has developed a very precise rehab program that we use in our Blues players. The good news about doing a surgical repair in an athlete who has this problem is that it's very predictable in terms of getting them back to activity and eliminating their pain, and most are able to return to play in hockey within six to seven weeks. What about the rest of us? Should I be worried about sports hernias? I've been playing a lot of high stakes pickleball. So a recreational athlete can get a sports hernia just like an elite athlete can. It can be from overtraining, not taking care of their core as a part of their training, or a sudden increase in training intensity. Spending weeks on the bench is tough for any athlete. Is there anything we can do to avoid a sports hernia besides avoiding sports? The most important thing that a recreational athlete can do to avoid getting a sports hernia is to have a strong, stable core and balance and strength and flexibility with their thigh muscles across the pelvis and to make sure that they warm up and they loosen up before they undergo any kind of intense training. Another important thing that athletes can do, and I think this is regardless of level, is to avoid just doing one thing over and over and over. And so if you play in the same sport all the time, that probably increases your risk of injury. That's why I mix it up to keep my pelvis loose. I still do the Dougie and the dip. <laughs> I mean, it's got to feel good to see one of your players back on the ice, right? To see a blues player or other athlete back out on the ice after they've had this problem and performing at a high level and having a great season, that's one of the best feelings in the world for me as a surgeon. So now we know more about sports hernias than we ever thought we would want to know. And that's the science of blues hockey.